Jesus got up and went across the room. He got the basin and He walked back to the disciples. And I encourage you, my friends, today on this Valentine's Day, married, single, divorced, separated, don't want to think about it, hope to have it, I don't care, that today you would get up and walk across the room to someone else and reach out and show them love. Reach out and show them acceptance. Reach out and show them the depth of your... But I'm broken, Brian. I don't know that I can do it. I don't know what I have. I'm, I'm... So are they. Their feet are just as crusty and just as dirty and just as disgusting as yours are. And as He's washed your feet, you can wash someone else. <laughs> You can do it because He's done it to you first. You can do it because He stretched, reached out, and took your feet and held them first. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Dear friends, it's next to the last book of the Bible. Well, not the last book of the Bible, but close. 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, Revelation. You're almost to the end. 1st John, they're all little tiny books. 1st John chapter 4. First John chapter 4, verse 7. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. You can't love without having gone to Jesus yourself. You can't love without having your own feet held by the greatest lover that's ever loved. <clears throat> you can't love until you've seen that dirtiness and said, No, Jesus, you can't touch it. And he says, I love you that much. And he takes it into your hands. Verse 9, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we may have eternal life through him. This is the greatest love that's ever been. So first of all, I, I, I hope and I pray that today you see yourself held by God. And if you haven't this afternoon, go home and turn off the radio and the television and say, God, what does my heart look like? And, and show me, tell me what you're speaking to me. Show me how you love me. And then to turn around and to love someone else in this community, to reach out and love someone else at a heart level, someone maybe that you haven't reached out to, someone you may not know that well, someone that seems different or strange or unique or whatever it might be, to reach out and to love them. And then thirdly, the greatest love verse ever there, you don't have to turn there, you may have it memorized, John chapter 3, verse 16, for God loved the world so much that He gave His one only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. The final act of ultimate Valentine's gift is to reach outside of this community and love someone that doesn't know Jesus. And it pains me. Because Christians are not known for their love. And yet that is the heartbeat of God throughout the entire Bible. And when you look at the story of Jesus, it's the heartbeat that pulses so loudly through every verse, every story, is this amazing love. Amen. What we see, that what people see in Christians is something completely different. I watched a movie this week. There's a book by the same name called God Save Us From Your Followers. <laughs> Let me bring it watch it here sometime. Stuff. Save us from your people, rather. And, and one of the things that this guy does is he takes his he takes his suit jacket and he puts bumper stickers all over it, all kinds of different bumper stickers. Christian, atheist, all kinds of bumper stickers. And he go out on the street and start having conversations with people, get their reactions, get them talking to them. And here's just a few examples of some of the conversations he had because I want you to realize what what other people think about being followers of Jesus. Dan, that's his name. He says. I'm talking to Lou. Where do you think you'll go when you die? He has a series of questions that he uses to get people talking. Where do you think you'll go when you die? Lou, nowhere. Dan, just in the dirt someplace? From whence I came. Dan says, anytime you can work poetry into an answer, you're in good shape. All right, third question. <laughs> Name something Jesus is known for. Lou. 
raising the dead and caring for the poor. Yeah, those are two pretty excellent feats. Okay, name something that Christian people are known for. Luke, today? Selective hatred and intolerance. Damn, the ball kind of got dropped somewhere along the way. Luke, between Jesus and the Christians, I think it was dropped a long time ago. <laughs> Talking to Morgan. Name something Jesus is known for. Love, right? My family is Catholic, but I wasn't raised Catholic. I wasn't raised in the church, but I did have a huge spiritual upbringing. What I was taught from my mother and my father and was that Jesus Christ and Christianity is based on love. And no one can de deny that's a great idea. Dan, amen. Number four, name something that the Christian people are known for. Morgan, politics. I would say especially in this country, politics. Give me an example of the things you've seen flying around in the media or in, this, or in, um, in, in conversations. Morgan. Our country is kind of a conundrum because it's built on freedom of religion, freedom of speech, it's the land of the free, and yet we're founded by a Puritan society. But I think the way things are being portrayed today makes religion feel more political than anything else. That's what people think about us. People out there, what they think about us. And I don't think that we can undo public perception of Christians, but this you can do. And that is, you can be known as the person who loves. Amen. You can be the person who is known for standing up, walking across the room, and embracing someone else's brokenness. For being there in the middle of their pain, you can be the one that walks across the room, holds them in your hands, and says, I love you, and I accept you, and I know a Jesus who can fix it. That is the greatest Valentine's Day gift that you can give, but you can't give it until you experience the love yourself. You can't do it. You can't experience it until you've experienced Jesus holding you in His hands. Getting His hands through. And if nothing else, my friends, I pray that you experience the depth and the power of Jesus holding you in His hands and your brokenness and saying, looking up into your eyes, with the most powerful eyes that say, I love you. And I treasure you even as you're broken, addicted, fighting stuff, arrogant, prideful, discouraged, depressed, whatever it might be, I hold you in my hands. <coughs> and, and I pray that today you experience that. And if you have, I challenge you to Give God a Valentine's gift. And you do that by reaching across the room and walking over to somebody else and showing them love. Connecting with their heart. Not a service. Hey, how's it going? But reaching out to them. Maybe it's simple saying, you are loved and you are valued. Maybe it's talking to them about something else. Maybe it's going a little bit deeper. And then you reach outside of this community this week and you reach out and you embrace them with love. You embrace them with something like that. My prayer is that you know the love of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. And that wells up in your response says, I love you, Jesus, my Jesus. I love you. Sing that old hymn. Sing it out from your heart. Thank you.